Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm your host Miss KK and this is The Wave. It is your weekly show that looks at topics related to personal, family and business finances. And really all I'm hoping is that by the time I get to the end of this conversation, you are really better equipped to make sound financial decisions. If you are new here, thank you so much for clicking. We love having you on board. And if you are already a retaining subscriber, and also my appreciation to you guys for always clicking and engaging with our content on in the comment section as well as on social media, especially on Instagram on our Q and A Thursdays, we really really appreciate that. All right, today I am here with a quick video on um, a Q and A I'm going to do arising from the live cover video I posted last week. So if you are not familiar with our channel, I do normally short clip. I did one clip on life insurance back last year where I basically just gave the, uh, the um, basics of what life covers are. And I also overlaid it with my personal experience, how I was, like, how I was paying an overpriced cover. And I got a friend to actually revise my cover and get it more in line with my needs at that point in time. And then last week, I did another video when Anfisa came out to the market, I think in conjunction with the Bank of Namibia, and they basically uh, gave more light to say, now consumer can see the one cover for multiple policy. And since I posted that video, so I've gotten so many questions that made me actually realize that maybe people are not really understanding how life covers work. And I just thought I'm going to do another video just addressing the most frequently asked questions, just addressing some of the things that I could see people not really understanding and also just you know um inviting you to ask any other further question that you have arising from today's q a session all right so one question that made me really um sort, sort of think back and see if people really understand what life cover is someone asked me can i claim on my life cover if i for example lose my job or and someone also said uh why is the life cover necessary if if I default on my um, house, the bank can just come and get my house instead of actually, you know, me taking out a life cover. And those two questions actually just made me realize that people don't seem to understand what the insured event is. So insurance in general is taken out as a cover against an insured event. An insured event would be different depending on the type of cover that you have. So let's take example, for example, common insurance, number one, your car insurance you are normally insured against an accident so you'll be contributing to an insurance company on a monthly basis so that in an event that you are bumped that insurance company would be able to you know pay uh, the damage that is caused by that accident obviously that is within the parameters of how much you are covered for and what is what's your access fee on on that insurance cover that you have for example so in that ex in that example your you having an ex accident is a insured event so if you buy this car and have it for five years and in this five years you haven't had any accident so you basically aren't benefiting from that uh, policy so you are benefiting in an event it happened but in an event it doesn't happen the insurance company is not obliged to return your money so that is the one insurance that i want to give an example then take for example a home insurance you take out a home insurance in an event your house catches fire or there's a flood that you know sinks your house and your, your household content are um, damaged so the insured event there is a fire happening and that fire happening would destroy your house plus its house content or a flood occurring and that soaking your house and your house won't be in a in a you know a condition that you can actually continue to live in that so in that case if those two events or either of those events happens the insurance company will then pay you out according to what was agreed in that contract and normally with insurance contracts that are linked to you know um, household items you normally insure the house itself the structure and then you also insure the household content you normally say i think my household content is actually worth this much so in an event if my house burns down the insurance is going to be able to re to reimburse you to actually pay you that much so that is the insured event in a, a house situation so when it comes to life cover the insured event is your life if when it comes to life cover there's also sometimes multiple element within your life cover that's why it's very important to take your life cover policy read what you are covered for read the nitty gritties of that contract so normally the common examples that are normally covered in the life cover number one is your life itself so if you were to die the insurance company will pay the dependent that you have or the beneficiary that you have nominated in your contract in the in the absence of that that you have nominated in your will etc so that is the the insured event so 
if you lose your job, you cannot claim from that life insurance because the insured event wasn't the job lost, it was your life. And you're still able to leave because you're losing your job, so you cannot claim from that insurance. Okay, then the other that sometimes is combined or bundled with life insurance is often um, disability cover. Normally, the insurance company would define certain parameters of what it means to be disabled. And most of the time, they actually, you know, describe it as you as you being put in a position not to be able to continue earning the income you're previously earning. So, for example, if you made a life as a teacher and because of this disability that you have, you can no longer teach, then they will pay you a disability payout because that's what you are covered for but the disability severe illness those ones are normally defined within the parameters of your contract so you need to be able to read and see what what constitute as disability so you losing your one hand doesn't stop you from teaching so that may not be considered as disability and the life and the insurance company might not even actually pay you out in that incident so that is what the one thing that i want to understand so understand what insurance you have understand what the insured the risks are and understand when that event will happen so you'll be able to make an informed decision okay so that's the one, the one question i wanted to address the second question was um, i have a loan and i've used a portion of my life cover to see it as credit life for that debt so can i claim from that insurance to go pay off those debt again you can't do that because the the reason why banks or in general lenders ask for credit life for credit insurance when you take out a loan so that when you die they don't have to go after your assets they can just claim from the life insurance payout and whatever is left in that is actually going to go towards your beneficiary so that's the one the second thing i wanted to address but there are also other products that such as credit cover where say you lose your job you, can, you could have an insurance that helps you pay, that helps you take over your debt for the next six months while you're while you're trying to get another job there's also such such products in the market you just need to understand what you're trying to get covered at. so getting all those inquiries from people made me realize that a lot of us don't really think about insurance and it also made me remember of an article i wrote on my blog a couple of years ago where i actually said insure what you cannot afford to lose and that article was inspired by me losing my bag at the airport so i traveled from wabish bay to johannesburg on an evening flight i got to Joburg or tambo and i was waiting there on the conveyor belt and my bag was nowhere to be found eventually the security guard saw i was lost looking for something and he told me that there is no other bag and then i went to the counter of the airline and they basically couldn't tell me where my bag was they said they don't have any system to see whether my bag actually made it on the plane so i must just go to my hotel room and wait for the next day when they can start tracing my bag so long story short my bag was actually loaded on a plane to cape town instead of Joburg. so i had to wait three days to actually get it and at that point in time i actually realized everything in that bag was an h1 so i had to think if this bag if i didn't recover this bag would my life have continued as normal shout out to yolisa who actually came to my rescue by bringing me to lotteries bringing me a few work clothes to wear because i had to go to work and um yeah I, I didn't really have anything to do so you need to you need to look at your life and see what can you afford to lose and what can't you afford to live without and the valuable things really are the ones that you should uh ensure okay deviating a little bit the other question I got was around sessions. What exactly are sessions? What does it mean to seed? Uh, and basically put in layman's term is to give up your right to someone when that payout is actually effective. So when the insured event happens, meaning when you die, someone who you seeded a portion of your life cover is going to have a preferential treatment. So for example, in our case, if you have a life cover of 1 million, you owe bank A 500,000 by the time you die, bank A will have a preferential treatment, meaning the insurance company will first pay out bank A 500,000 and the remainder will then go to your beneficiary. So that's basically what sessions are about. The other one, the other person said, can I now cancel all my other insurance and then seed this one insurance to multiple lender? This is also, I partly touched on this in my video when I was re-evaluating my life cover with a new product that I was introduced by my broker. You need to make sure that at any point in time you have a cover. So I had an existing life cover that would require me to contribute until I die. 
then my broker introduced a new product or the insurers that I, the insurer that I have introduced a new product where I can contribute up until retirement and for me that was a plus so I had to switch be, between the old cover and the new cover but because my old cover was linked to the bank I needed to have a, a one month where I have two covers in effect because I can't cancel the old cover until the new cover is in effect because if something were to happen between the transitioning period if I had to die or um, God forbid between these two transition period then basically I'm not covered so before you start cancelling out things before you start cancelling you know life cover and seeding this first get your whatever you seeded onto the product that you want to keep and then only after that is done you can cancel the old cover but i believe insurance brokers are great people if you speak to them what you're trying to do they are likely to advise you what's the best route to go for so that's the one thing the other thing i actually got was around study loans again people are saying they have study loans and they have separate covers and they have life covers that are not seeded to anything can they then go and cancel this yes you can go and cancel it but remember you need at any, at any point in time you need your loans to be seeded to your life cover so just make sure that you are consulting with your banks and you are consulting with your insurance company your intention to seed to cancel a cover to seed all debt to an existing cover or all debt to a new cover but it needs to be done within the ambit of the law lastly this is this is not a question but i just want to bring it out remember that in, oh it is another question that came actually on um my youtube video in the previous in the previous video i loaded the person asked how early can i see the policy after i have taken it out you can actually see it as immediately as it becomes effective so if i take my example i got my first life cover when i was buying the property and in the process of buying the property, I was required to take out the life cover. So as soon as I signed the life cover, the bank then got us, the insurance company then got me a session letter that I took to the bank, then the bank could pay out the loan. So there's no time lag between you taking out the life cover and you seeding the life cover. Although there's no time lag between you taking out a life insurance and you seeding it to someone, there may be a delay between um, you there may be other suspensive conditions that the insurance company will put in your contract to say this a b and c needs to first happen before we can pay out for example typical example for example a life cover a funeral cover etc they may tell you that if you die within the first six months of your contract you won't pay out or they will say if you die within the first six months of the contract we will only pay you the premium that you have paid so just watch out what the conditions are typical example is also with life with um, vehicle insurance if you are drinking and driving and you have an accident the insurance company won't pay out that's why they always need a police report and a breathalyzer test when you have an accident so really those are some of the questions that i wanted us to discuss around life cover if you really still have any other question if i haven't uh, answered your question please feel free to leave a comment in the section in the comment section so that i can then answer your question there that's all I had from today's video. Thank you so much for stopping by and thank you so much for getting our videos to 100 views within a short period of time. The deal is if I get to 100 views, I am going to upload a new video and let's keep the momentum going. Remember to subscribe, share the videos with your friends and family, give me a thumbs up, a like, and let's stay connected and engaged and it's good. Bye.